Amen. Alleluia. He arose. Amen. Welcome to our worship service this morning. Happy Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. Oh, we got to do that better. He is risen. Indeed. Amen. Some announcements before we begin. Um, we do have these green cards. If you're a first-time visitor, we would love for you to fill them out. If you do and hand it to one of our welcome team members, we would provide you a small gift. Also, we have these yellow cards. We love to pray for you. If there's a praise item or a prayer item, please fill this out. Put it in the offering plate, and we'll pray for you this week. Uh, with something different this week, uh, we are having you sign in, if you would like, on the blue uh, handout pads, if you would pass those through then you could record your visit. That would be awesome. Before I bring Craig up, just a few announcements. Sunday school begins next week. Some new classes. Look at the bulletin. One on prayer. Our focus is on prayer this year. Would encourage you to take advantage of that. We're also having a Lord's um, Supper training for parents and their students, uh, young people, children, on why we, why we offer uh, offering to our, our children and what that means and understanding the sacrament. So if you're interested in that, please come to that class in, um, in a couple weeks during the Sunday school hour in the youth room or in the fellowship hall. Uh, with that in mind, uh, Craig, if you wanna come up and let us know about our next Rebuilding Together project. Good morning and happy Easter. Uh, this is my opportunity to briefly invite you to uh, serve in a local mission project with Rebuilding Together. It's uh, something we've done in this church for a long time. As you can see, it's, this is our 21st year. Uh, the next slide really shows you the impact that this congregation has had within the county over the last 21 years. You can see the little blue dots on the map is where we've been, uh, where we've served. You can uh, it, uh, Just a reminder of what last year's project was. This was what the project looked like when we arrived to take a look at it. Well, this is what living without a kitchen for six years is. Behind the walls of a fine looking house in a fine looking neighborhood, you really never know what's going on behind the walls. But this is what this, is what this team did last year uh, to, to put this kitchen back in service as Diane flips through these charts. Not only brand new floors and countertops and walls and electrical, lots of electrical, Lewis. <laughs> Uh, but appliances, and, and this, is, this was a really, really big project. This is one of the bigger ones we've done. Uh, the one this year coming up that you'll see on this chart uh, is, is less uh, in terms of just the size and scope of the project, but one of the fundamental things we always see with houses uh, in, in, in many cases is water damage and water problems. That seems to be 70 to 80% of the problems we see with houses. This one has this problem, water in the basement as a result of badly operating gutters, downspouts, drainage. There's some plumbing problems. So we'll be doing a lot of that kind of work. Uh, and, and that's it, but it's mostly outdoor work. Uh, and it's, it's not as uh, heavy as a uh, new kitchen, but just as impactful because the, the reason we gotta get water out of the basement is so that the, the grant for the new HVAC can come in and give them a new HVAC system. So they won't do that if there's water in the basement. So that's our job. So the, the, the spring project this year is it's located in Dickerson. It's only about 20 minutes from the church. Um, and the, the usual, the usual uh, 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 who can help applies. Any adults like to see more youth come. 14 plus youth are available to, to help. You don't need a lot of skills. Right, we got some people with skills. We need a lot of people that are just willing and eager and have energy to spend the two days, are the 13th and the 27th. You don't have to come all day. If you only have a couple hours, a half a day. Uh, of course, we do need some people there all day, but any time that you can uh, commit to this would be terrific. Uh, is James here this morning? He's probably coming later. Okay, James Nelson, who most of you may know. Out of town, okay, out of town. All right, well, most of you know James. You've seen some emails. You see his email address here. If you, if you can uh, participate with some of your time, please contact James or see me, either way. Uh, we'd love to have you help in fellowship with, the, with, our, uh, with our project this year. So, thank you. Good morning. Will you please arise for the call to worship? I'm not one to judge, but 
Easter should be a day of celebration and great joy and the excitement where you just want to share with your church community and want to be with everyone. And because you're here at nine, I think you're better than those that are coming later. So with that, with that joy, with the laughter, with the knowledge of what has happened, please join me in our call to worship. And we've had practice on this one, so we're ready. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He became the risen Christ, conqueror of sin and death, the firstborn from the dead, that we too might taste the power of light and love. He who rose now sits at the right hand of the Father. The risen one is the ascended Christ, the high priest of heaven and the head of the church, his body. We declare today that we, as the church, are his blood-bought bride, that we are his people, a royal priesthood, a new and holy nation in his sight. He will come again for us, Maranatha, that we might be where he is. Maranatha, Lord Jesus. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, who was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Please remain standing as we sing the first two songs in your bulletin. God, we come this morning and sing, Hallelujah, you have risen. Jesus, you have risen indeed. And because of the resurrection of Christ, we who believe have new life and life with you eternal. 
We look forward to that hope when you will come again to take us and you, as you create the new heavens and the new earth. But now we wait, trusting in you, Lord Jesus. So we sing this morning, Alleluia, Alleluia, you arose, you are risen, and it makes all the difference in how we then are to celebrate you this, this morning. So do your work, O oh Holy God. Draw us into your presence. May our praise be one that brings honor and glory to you. May the nations hear us proclaim about the risen Christ. So Lord, bless our worship. In Jesus we pray. Amen. seated. The church, the blood-bought bride of Christ, following his exalted head, we now join as that community confessing what we believe together, supporting one another in what we are, the church. Please join with me. The manifold wisdom of God has been revealed. Rulers and authorities in heavenly realms now know of his marvelous plan. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, died on a cross for our sins. His body was pierced, his blood was shed as the perfect After he died the death of humanity, his lifeless body was placed in a tomb. He was wrapped in linens and spices and a large stone But God broke the darkness with the light of life. On the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. Resurrection power surged through every part of his being. It is now time.
for the tithes and offerings? And why do we give? Because the manifold wisdom of God has been revealed. Rulers and authorities in heavenly realms now know of his marvelous plan. It is our job of the church to let that plan be revealed to everyone and everywhere. And we can only do that with your help. We are also going to ask for your participation. Towards the middle of this song, we're going to be singing another verse. Well, the first verse of Crown Him with Many Crowns. <laughs> I'll turn around and direct you.
Oh, Heavenly Father, we are grateful for everything given here. We ask that you help us to use it to the very best of our ability to spread your hope, your peace, and above all, your love to everyone needing it. There is so much we can give, both time, talent, as well as treasure. And we ask that you open our hearts to give and bring glory to you by that. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Adam. Just a reminder, Rick, directly after this service and before the second service, we have a brunch, so you're all invited to, to participate in that. We also have an egg hunt for our children, so that's between 1010 and 1140, just to let you know on that. So let me ask you today a very personal question, but a question all of us must answer. Do you believe? Do you, amen, <laughs> all right, you're already answering, I like that. Do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus? This morning, we're going to journey through uh, the Gospels and look at different people and how they were confronted with Jesus and the message of the resurrection and have been confronted with, do they believe? For those who believe in the bodily resurrection of Christ, they were forever changed, as it is true for us today of those who believe in the resurrection. So turn with me as we enter this time of seeing people grapple and then believe in the resurrected Jesus. I want to start, set the stage with looking at uh, Jesus and Martha, that conversation that they have. Uh, Martha's brother, Lazarus, has died, and Martha confronted Jesus for not being there in time because he felt that Jesus could save his brother from death. And so they have this discussion about the resurrection, and then Jesus then confronts Martha with the most important question that she and us today must answer. So turn with me to John 11, verses 17 through 27. These are just one of many passages we're going to look at as we look at people who come to faith. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem and about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha had heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whoever, whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And anyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, as we gather around your word this morning, as we uh, focus on, on some of the uh, people on the Gospels that I had to wrestle with uh, you, Jesus, and being resurrected and what that meant for them. We pray, Lord, that we too would be able to answer boldly, yes, I believe. And because of our belief that it would uh, change us and that we would be about you, Lord, and about what you have called us to be about. So do that work of grace, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's first look how one has been affected by the cross of Christ before I go into some people who have been impacted by the resurrection of Christ. Because I believe as we look at these different people today, I want us to be encouraged and yet maybe challenged that maybe you are feeling a sense of woe and anguish. I pray that the resurrection would move you to wonder and faith. Maybe you're struggling with fear today, and so I would encourage you as we fix our eyes on the resurrection of Christ that you would have faith today that my hope is that wherever you are in your faith journey this morning, that God would turn your woe into wonder, your fears into faith, and your awe, anguish into awe as you look to the risen Jesus. So let's look at the Soterian guard, Soterian guard. Here he's impacted, his faith is impacted by the cross of Christ. Turn with me to Luke 23, 44 to 49, for we see he he, his woe went to wonder, then eventually to faith. 
It was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, while the sunlight faded, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw that had taken place, he praised God, saying, certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds that had assembled for this spectacle, when they saw what had taken place, returned home, beating their breast. All, this, all his acquaintances and the women who had followed him from Galilee stood at a distance watching these things. Listen to how Matthew records it. He said, Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, yielded up his spirit, and behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth sh shook and the rocks were split. The tomb also were, were opened, and many bodies of the saints had fallen asleep were raised, coming out of the tombs after his resurrection. After his resurrection, they went out into the holy city, city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with him keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake, what took place, they were filled with awe and said, truly, this was the Son of God. Well, who is the centurion here in this passage? He is a Roman officer in charge of probably about 100 men. And so this man had a very important part in the role in the Roman army. Here, particularly, he is one who is guarding the, uh, Jesus at this time, making sure everything goes smoothly. And yet, he sees something that impacts him forever. Before this scene, he saw Jesus love his enemies in a way that he saw no one else could love. He also saw words spoken to the repentant criminal. Remember, when Jesus died on the cross, there were two criminals on each side of him. And one of them professed faith in Christ, and he says this to that criminal. He says, today you will be with me in paradise. Now, in this section, we see a supernatural darkness that caused a woe-like feeling in his life. We see him also, Jesus, praying to God the Father, saying, I commit my spirit. And then he sees the giving up of his life. Now, think about it. All that was taking place was unexplainable to this uh, centurion. His guarding skills were lost in comparison to the shaking earth and the darkness that engulfed him. No wonder he was filled with woe and awe. When he considered all these things, he praises God that certainly this man was innocent. We see a movement from the centurion believing like everyone else at that time that he was guilty, that Jesus was a liar, that he was a criminal, that he wasn't who he said he was. And now, as he witnessed Jesus on the cross and all that happened there at the cross, he believed that he was innocent. He believed that he is the one that he says that he is, that he is the Messiah. The centurion and the guards have seen many crucifixions, and yet this one was radically different. This one provoked all wonder and faith. With this awestruck, earth-shattering events, coupled with the extraordinary self-control and purity and love shown by Jesus in his death, impacted the centurion so that he would truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Through the wondrous cru crucifixion of Christ Jesus, God brought the centurion and others to faith in him. God turned their anguish, their awe and wonder to faith in Jesus Christ, and they were forever changed. That was the cross. Now we will look at some people that were infected by the resurrection of Christ, and I want to first look at the Marys and some other women. We see that they had fear that turned to faith. Turn with me to Matthew 28, 1 to 10. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For the fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, do not be afraid. 
For I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he has said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. Behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they have departed quickly from tomb with fear and with great joy and ran to tell the disciples, his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Luke passage that I will not read fully, but talks about how, the, how Mary and the women were, were perplexed about this, that, 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 that his body was not there. They were frightened, and they bowed down to the faces to the ground. And then later on, it talks about how they remembered his words about rising on the third day and returning from the tomb. They told these things to the leaven and to all the rest. I love this scene here. Women come, the, the women come to, to the tomb ready to care for his body. Now, that kind of tells you that they really didn't think that he was going to rise for the dead. They, they had these spices. They wanted to care for his body. And so when they come and they don't see a body, they're perplexed. What they planned to anoint the body was not God's plan. God had a different agenda. And we see that. We see that these radiant angels appear to them as the earth shook, and they become fearful. Uh, can you imagine the scene? They, they come to check out Jesus. They don't find his body. They see the, the stone rolled away, and they see these glorious angels appearing before them, speaking to them. I, I, I don't know about you, but I would be undone. I would be frightened. I was like, what in the world is going on here, right? And yet the angels reassured that Jesus did what he promised, that he is risen, and you will see him soon. And so they depart joyfully to tell the other disciples. And while on the way, they run into Jesus and he tells them to tell the other disciples to let them know that I am risen. So think about it. After the angels giving the message that Christ has risen, the women were the first messengers of the resurrection. And they were the ones that were to tell the others about Jesus arising. Why is that unusual? Because women during that day were untrustworthy. You could not take their word for it. And yet Jesus chose these women, the Marys and the other women, to carry the trustworthy message of the resurrection. This demonstrated great courage and boldness and faith and humility as they departed to tell the good news of their Savior, of their friend, of their Lord, of their shepherd of the risen king, that he is alive. In fact, their faith encouraged Peter and the others to believe as well. So the question that I ask, as, as, you, as you look at the cross, as the Saturian did, and he believed, do you believe? As Mary and these other, the Marys and these other women, as they look at Christ's resurrection, do you believe? Are you allowing your fears, or the, whatever they may be, prevent you from seeing that Jesus is alive, he is risen, and we can take our fears to him because we know that God has a plan and he will be faithful to his promises. That is, he is faithful to his promise that Christ would die and rise again. He is faithful to us today that you can believe and to know that he's with you and for you. He is forgiving you and he's turned your faith into freedom and he's giving you grace to witness to others. I now want to turn our attention to Thomas. Thomas gets a pretty bum rap, and maybe rightly so. We, we call him the doubting Thomas, right? And here we see his doubt turns to dependence. Turn with me to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 20, 19, and 23. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see his hands, the mark of the nails, and place my fingers into the mark of, mark of the nails, and place my hand into the side, I will never believe. Are you like that today? <laughs> I need to see it to believe it. But then eight days later, the disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. 
Put your hand and place it on my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe, Thomas, answered them, my Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. I don't know. Maybe you're like Thomas. I think I am sometimes. We're full of doubt. He wasn't going to take the words of the others about Jesus' resurrection. Thomas needed physical proof that Jesus has risen and is alive. Again, I love how Jesus enters into this conversation with Thomas. He's so wise, he's so compassionate, he's so gentle, yet firm. And so he comes to the disciples and then he turns to Thomas and he offers the proof that Thomas was looking for. Put your finger here, set your hands on my side. Thomas now has his proof that Jesus had bodily resurrected. He saw that Jesus was not a spirit, he was not a ghost, but Jesus is the real deal with a real and true physical body. Thomas then believes. We too can believe though we were not physically there. In fact, Jesus reminds us, no, he declares, he says this, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas' statement is a clear confession of his newly found faith in Jesus as his Lord and God. In fact, I believe the Apostle John's writing of his gospel, his primary purpose was that all his readers, including us today, would come to confess Jesus as their Lord and their God in the same way that Thomas did, taking our doubts, looking at the scriptures and examining them and say, yes, Jesus, you are. You died and you rose again from the dead bodily. I can believe. I can trust you as we go to scriptures, run to him, so if you have doubts today, run to scriptures, wrestle with scriptures, allow God to speak to you through his holy word about who Christ is and what he's accomplished for you. For he has risen. It has changed the life of the Marys and the other women. It has changed the life of Thomas and it has changed the life of the disciples and it has changed the life of two other people on the road to Emmaus where their uncertainty moved to hope. Let me read this passage here. Again, I love how Jesus enters into the picture. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. And while they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation that you're holding with each other as you walk? And as they stood still, looking sad, just picture that, right? Then one of them named Calapas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the thing that have happened in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, a man who was a prophet, mighty in deed, and word, and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since that things have happened. Moreover, some of our women, um, of our women and company amazed us. They, they were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he is alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman said, but they did not see him. <laughs> I love this. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, O oh, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken. Was it not necessary that Christ would suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going. He acted as if he were going, if he were going further, but they urged him strongly saying, stay with us. For it is towards evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized. He Then Jesus vanished from their sight, and they said to each other, Do not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, 
while he opened to us the scriptures. And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they took what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here we see two of Jesus' followers. They are walking on the road to Emmaus. They're talking about all the things that have happened recently in Jerusalem. And yet they were uncertain what to make of all that was going on. Again, then we see the risen Jesus come into, on towards that road. And he, enter, they, he enters into their, their discussion. These two men do not recognize him, right? And then Jesus asked them a question about what they were talking about. First, they respond in a, in a way that is sad, like, why? You know, what's, what, why do you not know what's going on? But then they kind of like say, like, duh, come on, Jesus, come on, man. Don't you know what's going on about, what, about the cross of, of our Savior? They hoped, that, they hoped that Jesus was truly the Messiah, that they were looking for. I do wonder, as, as Jesus was discussing with these two, two men on the road, uh, what he was thinking, you know, um, as they talked more about uh, what they heard about the, the women going to the tomb and not finding the body, the conversation they had with angels. He does say very bluntly, uh, he calls them foolish and slow to believe. Jesus is not shy of saying hard things to us at times. We sometimes are foolish and sometimes we are slow to believe. At least I know that I am. But then what he, Jesus takes this great opportunity and he, he opens up the scriptures to them. And he shows to them from the Old Testament, from Moses and the prophets, how they, they, they were pointing to Christ's death and his resurrection. And how, how this Jesus fulfilled that, those promises, that he is truly the Messiah, that he truly has died and he truly is risen. And yet even as he's opening the scriptures to them, they still do not recognize him. It wasn't until that Jesus took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, they recognized that he is Jesus, the one who rose again. I wonder if that brought to mind their last supper that they had with him, where he broke the bread and he gave it to them. But it was through that that they came to recognize that Christ is alive, that he is risen. Now, Jesus vanished, but as they vanished, their uncertainty turned to hope. They believed that he is risen, and they had hope again in him. Even their ignorance was turned into delight. They realized that Jesus was their unknown guest. And at the table in Emmaus, Jesus became their host. Does the resurrected Jesus give you hope today? Whatever you may be wrestling with in your life, Knowing confidently that he has risen and he is alive can make all the difference in the world and how we live this life before us. Do you believe? Do you believe? I love how the scriptures do not hide the faith struggles of the disciples, those closest to him. We see real people wrestling with who Jesus is and what he's accomplished in his death and his resurrection. These are real accounts of real people who have put their trust in Jesus and stand in awe and wonder of him and the resurrected life. Now he provides all who confess him as Lord and, and Savior. My brothers and sisters in Christ, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Is your faith renewed and strengthened today as you serve a risen Lord who has conquered both sin and death? and brings new life to, to you. May this be a day of renewed and confident faith that you share with others in your life like the other disciples. My friends, he is risen, he is risen indeed. For those who may not have trusted Jesus or those who are doubting or wrestling in your faith, much like the disciples, look to the resurrected Jesus. Get to know him, seek him as you read scripture. May you find forgiveness and new life in him as you believe in him. May this be the day of your salvation. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are amazed at how you work in the lives of your people. I love these gospel stories, accounts of real people faced with you, Jesus, your death and your resurrection, and how both of those impacted the lives of those 
in the New Testament and how they continue to make a difference in our lives today. Lord, you truly died. You suffered a horrible death for us because of our sins. You took the punishment that we deserved and yet you did it joyfully. You were willing to die for us in love. You went to the cross so that we can experience forgiveness. But not only that, you rose again just as you promised on the third day, just as the scriptures pointed us to as well. Jesus, you bodily resurrected and you defeated both sin and death. Death no longer has victory. Sin no longer has a victory because of the risen Christ. And because of that, Lord, we can now have new life as well. We can spend eternity with you. But today we can have new life, a life that then lives for the glory and the sake of Jesus. So, Lord, those who may not know you today, I pray, Holy Spirit, you would, you would move in their hearts that they would see you today clearly as a resurrected Lord. For us who do know us, may this message never grow dull. May it renew us and strengthen us and give us more vigor to share you with others. Oh, Lord, do your work of grace, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us stand, oh, let us now pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing about this living hope.
My friends, because Jesus lived that perfect life, he died on that cross for your sins and my sins. And when he rose again for the third day, he conquered both sin and death. That is our victory. Jesus is our victory. And as Jesus is our victory, then we can go out with his power and his strength to declare that Christ is risen. So go forth this morning, my brothers and sisters. Go confidently knowing that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.